Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA at 6, a brick shell is all that remains of a home following a late night fire. Details on why fire crews had a hard time putting out the flames. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 42 degrees, 42 degrees to start your Saturday morning. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Saturday, October 31st. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. I thought it was a trick looking at the screen see at 42. Oh my gosh, when I walked out this morning, I was like... <laughs> I, had, I, had a, I had a fleece on. I, I think you jacket. walked into the, the station. You're like, oh, my God, it's so cold. That's usually my first first thing I say. You know, it is chilly out there this morning. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, but the weather will be a treat in the afternoon. Mm. It's going to be nice and comfy. Temperatures will be in the 70s for uh, the high. But outside right now, you can see that it is cold. It's 33 degrees out in Kerrville, 42 at the airport in San Antonio, 44 in Uvalde, 41 in New Braunfels, 40 in Gonzales, 37 in Pleasanton. All of us are above freezing. Up in the hill country, temperatures may dip to 32 degrees very briefly before sunrise, uh, but then we're going to really warm up quickly. Look at the forecast, the spooky Halloween forecast. Temperatures will be climbing up to 77 in the afternoon, south winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So coming up in the forecast, I'm going to give you a trick-or-treat forecast. I know things are going to look a little different for some kids today uh, this year because of socially distancing, distancing, but I'll still have that trick or treat forecast for you. We'll wrap up the weekend with sunshine and then we'll talk about how the fall feeling will stick around in the forecast coming up in just a bit. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, now to the latest from overnight. Two people are dead after a high speed crash on the far south side. Police responded to the 500 block of Peaceful Lane just after one this morning. Investigators tell us a couple was in an SUV driving eastbound when the driver lost control, crashed through a property, hit an electrical pole and rolled over. The couple was thrown from the vehicle, both pronounced dead on the scene. The crash into the electricity pole knocked out power in the area but it has since been restored. Also new this morning, crews with the Kirby Fire Department monitoring a large house fire or what's left of it. Crews responded around 930 last night. This is the scene. This is the 3500 block of Candlewood. When they arrived, as you can see right there, flames coming through the roof of the second story of the home. The fire was so bad, the second floor and the staircase collapsed. All that remains now the bones of what was the house. Crews say it might need to be demolished, but some good news, everyone was able to get out safely. One well, your latest news, a discovery could lead to closure for one family. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says the skeletal remains were found by a Texas Parks and Wildlife Game Warden at a rural spot near Foster Road in Hildebrandt in far east Bear County. Salazar believes they may belong to Curtis Perry. A man who disappeared in July, Perry's family says they were hoping for a better outcome, but believe he has been found. No, you got the news that you were looking for, but just not the, the news that you wanted. The BCSO has described the suspects involved in the case as young and very dangerous. Salazar believes the teens could be linked to other violent crimes in the area. So far, no arrests have been made. Now let's check in with the latest coronavirus numbers here in Bear County. The seven day average has dropped to 191 cases, but not by much when compared to the rest of the week, which was already seeing higher numbers than the week before. And the numbers in the hospitals continue to rise. 235 COVID-19 patients are currently admitted. That's 12 more than Thursday night. 92 are now in the ICU and 50 are on ventilators. And one more death confirmed, bringing the total to 1,251 people dying because of this virus since the pandemic hit us at home. To honor those who have lost their lives later this morning, church bells across the city will ring at 7.05. Metro Health, though, sending out another reminder this morning. Stay safe this Halloween season. Make sure to stay home if you don't feel well. Never go inside someone's home and wear a mask other than the one from your costume. The last day of early voting wrapped up with more than 658,000 votes in Bear County, but that number is expected to rise after last night's totals. 
The total is already higher than the last presidential election, and in Texas, more than 9 million voters have visited the polls so far. The U.S. Elections Project also reporting more than 86 million votes have been cast across the nation. And speaking of the election, President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden hitting battleground states today. Meanwhile, new questions are being asked about when Americans will see final results, and we're just three days away from Election Day. ABC's Karina Mitchell shares the latest. Emblematic of how the pandemic has transformed this election, former Vice President Joe Biden spent part of Friday in Iowa, a state President Trump won by 10 points in 2016. It now has one of the highest COVID-19 rates in the country. Donald Trump has waved the white flag. He surrendered to this virus. But the American people don't give up. Biden making this his closing argument. The two candidates stumping across the upper Midwest, Trump in Michigan yesterday, and then both holding events in Minnesota and Wisconsin. We love you. We love you. No social distancing and little mask wearing at any of Trump's rallies. The president instead focusing on the economy, optimistic about a V-shaped recovery while making light of the virus. We opened it up. And now we're at a level we were, I used to talk about the V. This is a super V. If you get it, you're going to get better. Yeah. And then you're going to be immune. And it's a whole thing and it goes away. This as the country hits a dire new record. 92,000 new cases in a single day. Hospitalizations and deaths also rising. Now, like Iowa, polls show other once reliably red states are more purple. Arizona, Georgia and Texas. Biden's running mate, Senator Kamala Harris, spent the day there campaigning. Vice President Pence was in Arizona trying to hold ground. And just days out from Election Day, worries we may not have final results Tuesday night. This year, there's been a massive increase in mail-in and absentee voting due to COVID-19. In some states, votes are counted even if they come in days after the election, if they're postmarked by Election Day. And eight states don't even start looking at those mail-in ballots until Election Day. Today, all four candidates heading to battleground states, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Florida, and North Carolina. All states President Trump won in 2016. All states, according to 538, show Biden now with a slight edge. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. And speaking of the election, we want to remind you that here at KSET, we have full election coverage all day, both on air and online. It's beginning tomorrow night, 7 p.m., and it lasts until Wednesday. We're going to have the latest on national, state, and local races. For all this information, just head to KSET.com. And time now, 607, 42 degrees out there. Sarah said it was cool out there. It's cold. It's cold for San Antonio. Well, a common household item used to clean for generations, but it, not, but it might not be as helpful as you think still ahead why you shouldn't rely on vinegar during the pandemic. Mm. Plus, a rare asteroid that could be worth quintillions. Did I say that right? I didn't even know that was a thing. Quintillions. 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 Of dollars. Yes, that's a thing. I think 19 zeros. We're going to explain next. All right, taking a look outside with live cam. 42 degrees. Grab your jackets this morning because it's cold. Sarah Spivey will give you your spooky forecast when you come back. Welcome back. A new study has given us a closer look at a rare metallic asteroid. So here's the thing. It could be worth 10 quintillion dollars. So that's a number after 19 zeros. So the 16 Psyche is one of the largest objects in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Psyche is believed to be made entirely of nickel and iron. Scientists think it is exposed core of an early planet. They hope studying the asteroid will help them better understand the Earth's core. NASA is planning to launch an unmanned spacecraft to study Psyche. It won't get there until 2026. It kind of looks like a misshapen Death Star. I was thinking the same thing. It's I thought Death Star. Terrifying. It's awesome. Because think about it. If they think it's like the inner core of a former planet, think of how much they're going to learn. It's true. It's pretty impressive. And dun, 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 dun. <laughs> hey, stop that. We don't know if that's copyrighted. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. There will be a lot of people, though, dressing up like Star Wars uh, figures tonight, I think, for Halloween. Was so. that The Mandalorian? Oh, the okay. Mandalorian, the second season just came out, but 
Uh, my husband, he convinced me to watch the first one, and I love it. And Baby Yoda is the cutest. The cutest. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of Baby Yoda oh costumes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so cute, and it's like a CGI character. Like, I don't understand why it's so cute, but it is. I cried <laughs> during The Mandalorian. It's pretty awesome. All right, it's 42 degrees outside, so it, it is chilly out there. And we've even got some temperatures in the 30s, especially up in the higher elevations. Look at Kerrville and Comfort, 33 degrees. Now, temperatures may briefly dip to 32 degrees up in Kerrville and Comfort. It would be a very light freeze because the sun, once the sun comes out, uh, we're going to quickly warm up. It's 34 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 39 at Port SA, 39 at JBSA Randolph, 42 two here in San Antonio, 40 in Hondo, 34 in Tarpley, 49 in Los Maples, and 41 in New Braunfels. It's 37 down in Pleasanton. So like I said, today is going to be a lot like the last couple of days. However, I do think we'll see a few more cirrus clouds out there, those high wispy cirrus clouds. That'll just make for beautiful sunsets and sunrises. So we look forward to that. As far as rain chances go, it's not going to happen today. We're just going to have total sunshine as we close out October 77 for the high in San Antonio around 78 in Del Rio 75 in Kerrville 77 in New Braunfels and 75 in Gonzales safe to say a high temperature in the mid to upper 70s a beautiful fall like day ahead for us of course it is Halloween uh, and so no spooky weather today for us just beautiful weather We'll be at 56 at 10, 67 at noon, 77 for the afternoon high, south winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, and I have to break out the dancing mummies and the dancing Frankensteins for today's trick-or-treat forecast this evening. It's going to be really nice. Uh, we'll have south winds at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunsets at 648, so that's when it'll start to get dark. Uh, we'll slowly dip down into the 60s uh, by about 9 getting chilly. So however you're choosing to trick or treat tonight, the weather will be very beautiful and won't be any sweating in those costumes. Just a friendly reminder too, daylight saving ends tonight. We're excited about this in the station. We work the mornings and so we wake up really early. We get an extra hour of sleep. Everybody gets an extra hour of sleep. Set those clocks back an hour at 2 a.m. Today, sun rises at 747, sun sets at 648. Tomorrow, sun will rise earlier. 647 and sunset will be 547 tomorrow uh, with daylight saving time coming to an end. Something to note is that it's dry outside. We've got dew points in the 30s. That's really dry. Uh, now it's going to stay dry because tomorrow we're actually getting a weak cool front that'll move through. It's not going to do too much to our temperatures, but it is going to keep things nice and dry in the week ahead and keeping things feeling comfortable. So looking ahead to the rest of the week tomorrow, we will wake up at 50 degrees, top off at 75. Monday in the 40s for the mornings, well as the week ahead, and then in the afternoon, 70s for the high temperature. By the way, mugginess will work its way back into the forecast by Friday, but as you can see, no significant chance for rain as we start uh, November, and it's been a pretty dry October as well. Hey, coming up, I've got some interesting news about a full moon tonight mm. on Halloween. Thank you, Sarah. Before we uh, tease the next story, do you want to do your Halloween dance? Okay, well, the Frankenstein graphic, it was like <laughs> dance. It was a man. weird dance. It's like a running man, Frankenstein. Oh, go for okay, it. Okay, because it, it was... It no, 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 Sarah Costa's running man was on point. I don't know. <laughs> Time now, 616, 42 degrees out. All right, well, voting delayed because of a power outage, but not for any typical reason. Still ahead, what made these Nebraska voters wait even longer than they expected? And there are just some things you should never clean with. Well, some things you should never clean with vinegar, especially during the coronavirus. We're going to tell you which ones right after the break. Also, it smells really bad. My mom used to clean with vinegar. Mm. It smelled the whole house up. All right, pick three, five, four, three, fireball six, daily four, six, six, eight, four, fireball eight. And your cash five, four, 12, 21, 26, 34. Mega millions, 14, 19, 34, 39, 59, big number 11, mega player two. Good luck. 
Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday for ages. People have sworn by using good old fashioned vinegar to clean things, but there is no evidence that is effective against the coronavirus. As 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris shows us there are some things you should never clean with vinegar. Google cleaning with vinegar and you get hundreds of results proclaiming its powers, but there is no evidence that it kills the coronavirus. If your goal is to just remove grime and grit, it might do the trick. So vinegar is great for cleaning windows and descaling your coffee maker, but it does have its limits and it could even potentially damage your home's appliances. And many of these things can be found in the very place you'd likely use vinegar, the kitchen. Vinegar can eat away at certain synthetic rubbers and it can corrode different grades of stainless steel, especially if there's already scratches or chips on it. Even the fine edge on sharp knives can be pitted by vinegar. It's also a no-no for stone and wood surfaces. The acid in vinegar can pit, scar, etch, and dull natural stone countertops. Vinegar can also cloud, soften, or etch the finish of wood floors. Even if vinegar won't hurt a surface, it might not be the best cleaner. Vinegar is safe to use on your kitchen range, but if it's a greasy mess you're looking to clean, it's not going to do much. For that, you need an alkaline-based cleaner like ammonia. And for smooth cooktops, stick with a ceramic cleaner. And in case you're tempted, never use vinegar on your electronic screens. It can make the touch screen less responsive. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. On top of that, your phone or your iPad would also smell funny for a little bit. It stinks. <laughs> I'm now 622, 42 degrees. Well, coming up next, waiting even longer than expected. What causes unexpected power outage in Nebraska? Good morning. Welcome back and happy Halloween. Imagine waiting in line at the polls for hours just to find out the power went out right before it was your turn to cast your vote. Ooh, well, that happened to one site in Nebraska yesterday, and unlike other states, this outage had nothing to do with the storm. Instead, it was a squirrel. <laughs> it shut down the power. <laughs> Officials report the squirrel created a mess in the power lines. It took out the lights in the building. Some had already waited hours and a long line to cast their ballots when this happened. They decided to leave. Others stayed until the power was restored. Needless to say, some people were going nuts. <laughs> you could call it a squirrely situation. Oh my God. 626, 42 dad, degrees out. These dad jokes. <laughs> these dad jokes. <laughs> All right. We'll still ahead in our next half hour. Experts are staying na saying now is more important than ever for kids to let their imagination run free. How it can be crucial for their development. And it is a story we've been tracking for months now. TikTok and why a judge postponed it being shut down by President Trump. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday. 630 this morning, October 31st. Do you have any Halloween sayings you want to get out there? No. It's spooky. It's spooky. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even do it all morning. I figured why not have fun now? No. <laughs> Well, anyway, happy Halloween. Happy we're excited. Halloween. 42 degrees out this morning. I'm saying we're starting off with a trick, but Sarah, you say we're going to have a treat later on today. We Ooh. are. It's going to be nice and comfortable this afternoon, but for now, temperatures are definitely on the chilly side. It's 42 at the airport in San Antonio, but locally there are some areas that are already in the 30s. Pleasanton at 38 degrees, 33 in Kerrville, 39 in Carrizo Springs, 48 degrees in Del Rio, and 46 in Catula. And so it is chilly out there right now. You're definitely going to want that sweater if you have any early morning plans. In the afternoon, however, it's going to be very comfortable. We're talking temperatures in the 70s. And of course, tonight, trick or treating for the folks and the kiddos at home. It's going to be interesting, too, because we're going to have a rare full moon tonight. I've got details on that. Might need to watch out for werewolves. Just saying, just saying. Max. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. New this morning in South Bear County, authorities investigating a crash that ended with two people dead and neighborhoods without electricity. Bear County deputies received a call for a rollover at the 500 block of Peaceful Lane just after one this morning. Alicia Beretta is live from downtown with more on how things unfolded. Good morning, Alicia. 
Good morning. Well, let me tell you that this happened in a rural neighborhood. So that made it really difficult be for authorities because electricity went out. So really what they were relying on were their flashlights and of course their own flashing lights. And this even made it hard for the photographer to see exactly where that vehicle ended up and how the scene looked. But take a look. This was just after one this morning off of Peaceful Lane uh, and take and nearly 10 emergency vehicles helped light up the area. According to deputies, an SUV was speeding eastbound on Peaceful Lane when things ended deadly. The driver lost control of the SUV and drove through a property, causing some damage. But unfortunately, things didn't end there. The driver hit an electric pole and then rolled over. Inside the vehicle were two people. We know a man and a woman who deputies say were ejected from the SUV because of that roll, rollover. Both were pronounced dead on the scene. And at the scene, we also saw CPS arrive to restore electricity. We know several homes were left without power this morning because of that accident. accident that has been taken care of. But right now, what we're waiting to learn is the name and age of both that man and woman who died at the scene. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, a new federally funded program will soon be addressing the mental health needs of teens in the juvenile justice system. That's right. The objective of this new panel, keep those in, quote, a very fragile situation from reoffending. Paul Venema with how the $622,000 program is set to work. Mental health issues are in play in the majority of cases here in the juvenile courts. In some cases, juveniles are sent from here to residential treatment facilities. What happens upon their release is the focus of the federally funded program. It allows us to work with kids at a time when they're very vulnerable. Chief Juvenile Probation Officer Lynn yes. Wilkerson said the program is designed to make the transition from the residential treatment facility go smoothly. But the ones that do go to the secure facility are high need, they're at high risk of reoffending. And if they are going to reoffend, they're most likely to reoffend in that first six months when they're released from the facility. The program is staffed to deal with that concern. We expect it to include a, a clinician, an assigned probation officer, of course, a case manager, and a family partner. Judicial oversight is a critical element in the program. The courts will be meeting with these children um, after they are released from our facility and checking in with them, making sure they're doing okay. The program will be available to all three Bear County juvenile courts once it's up and running. Paul Venom, a case at 12 News. And a lot of things have been canceled because of this pandemic. Another big cancellation to tell you about. The city of Bernie announcing that the city-sponsored holiday events will not happen this year. The Bernie mayor says Dickens on Main set for November 28th and December 5th. And the annual parade planned for December 5th will not go on as scheduled this year. The mayor says these cancellations are out in abundance of caution. The city does not want to host events that could inflame the spread of the virus. Well, another HEB opened up on the far west side of San Antonio this week. The location on Petranco Road created more than 350 jobs and will offer some services some have been utilizing during the pandemic, like curbside and home delivery services. This is the second HEB store that has opened so far this week. Another location was opened up in Lubbock back on Wednesday. I know a lot of people in Lubbock very excited about that. And something that we're very excited about back here, it is that time of year again. Daylight saving time ends Sunday as clocks fall back one hour. The official time change is at 2 a.m., but for people that usually hit the hay earlier, like myself, go ahead, set those clocks back before you go to sleep. Your smartphone, iPhone, such, should automatically adjust the clock, but you're going to need to manually adjust your clocks on your car radio, oven, alarm clock, and other standalone clocks around your home. Well, the number of deaths has increased to at least 26 following a strong earthquake in the Aegean Sea. Two of the victims are teenagers who lost their lives in Samos, Samos Crete, Greece, while the remaining fatalities are all in Turkey. More than 800 people were also injured in Turkey. Search and rescue operations continue in seven buildings. A 7.0 magnitude earthquake hit the Aegean Sea near Greece and Turkey on Friday afternoon. And some events supporting Joe Biden's campaign canceled here in Texas after security concerns. The Democratic Party citing these concerns as a group of President Donald Trump supporters were allegedly following the Biden campaign bus as they were making their stops. Texas Democrats were hoping to host several speakers, such as Congressman Lloyd Doggett, Wendy Davis, and Austin Mayor Steve Adler. Now, a representative with the Travis County Democrats said, 
that it's the same dozen people looking to disrupt events, and it's been happening all throughout the country. Meanwhile, the U.S. Postal Service says it's taking extraordinary steps to try to deliver ballots before the election. It says carriers will collect mail tomorrow in some places and gather it early on Monday and Tuesday. The Postal Service also announced it will instruct carriers to check every residential box for outgoing mail. On Tuesday, a federal judge issued a set of orders to force the USPS to work harder to deliver ballots on time. And the latest in the saga of TikTok, a federal judge postponing President Donald Trump's threatened shutdown of the popular app. U.S. District Judge Wendy Beetlestone blocked an upcoming Commerce Department action. It would have effectively banned TikTok in the United States, cutting off from vital technical services. The Trump administration has said TikTok is a security threat to our country, and the Trump administration is citing that because it is Chinese-owned, it's owned by ByteDance, that there's a possibility the Chinese government could spy on anyone who has TikTok on their phones. And time now, 637, 42 degrees out. Well, still ahead, the latest major company to announce pandemic bonuses. How much Lowe's is dishing out for its frontline workers? And whether it's dolls, toy cars, or action figures, playtime for a kid is a normal part of their routine. Coming up, why pretending is so important for a child's development. What was your go-to, I guess, playtime thing growing up? Oh, Imagination Central. I don't know what that means. Like, everything was like imagination. Mm. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> a lot of imagination here. <laughs> what, I'm, what you're not imagining is this 42 degree weather. Sarah Spivey will let you know about your forecast when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. Parents of young children know what it's like to play pretend. Experts are saying now is more important than ever to let your children have their imagination run free. Stephanie Cerna explains why playing pretend is crucial for their development. Playtime is not only fun for kids, experts say it's essential for their growth. According to Good Housekeeping, playing pretend is extremely beneficial for your kids. Pediatricians say a child's imaginative and creative play is essential for their social, emotional, and cognitive development. Playing pretend can teach them self-control, self-regulation, and increase their concentration. It can also help them deal with times of crisis and stress later in life. They say it can help a child feel less stressed and makes them feel more safe and secure. Experts say there are ways for parents to support pretend play and use it to help gauge their child's emotions. Child psychologists say if you engage in pretend play with your child and notice recurring themes of aggression or inappropriate content, that it may be caused by underlying situations and that you may want to contact your child's pediatrician. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. All right, we all know imagination, clearly important. I was a big Power Ranger person growing up. Okay, so I would pretend mm -hmm. ninjas, like that, because I grew up with two brothers, so mm -hmm. it was Power Rangers, but ninjas, like yeah. it was always like, ninja fighting, but we weren't allowed to actually hit each other. I would hope not. And, or else we got in big trouble. <laughs> Sarah, what about you? Oh yeah, I like made up games on the playground, like saying to myself. Oh yeah, <laughs> mermaids. Yeah. Do you ever play mermaids? Uh, mainly I made up Pokemon games. Can't say I played games. that one. Pokemon games. <laughs> <laughs> made up Pokemon games, so many different things. It's the way it was. And yeah. it's good to have an imagination. Agree. And you know what? The weather today is going to be beautiful in the afternoon. Right now, though, it is chilly outside. Uh, take a look outside right now. Mostly clear skies, 42 degrees. So, yeah. It's definitely jacket weather. Uh, we've even got a wind chill out there with winds from the west northwest at about five miles per hour. Feels closer to 38 than it does to 42 around San Antonio. Some places are awfully close to freezing. 33 degrees in Comfort, 34 in Kerrville, 34 at Bernie Stage Airfield. But just a few minutes away from sunrise here, uh, we should be able to see temperatures rise pretty quickly. 41 in Lotus, 38 Rio Medina, 42 in Castroville, 39 at JBSA Randolph, 41 in New Braunfels. Wait up temperature in Pleasanton is 38 degrees. Meanwhile, warm spot on the map. It's 48 in Del Rio, 48 down in Laredo as well. So in our national weather pattern, we're actually going to have a few clouds out there today. One of the reasons for that is we've got a low pressure system sending some high thin Sierras clouds from Baja, California. But unfortunately, no rain chances for us. I say unfortunately because it's been a very dry October. We'll talk about that in a bit, but the weather will be nice. So that's the good news. We've got a high pressure system in place, and so today Nothing but sunshine. Afternoon high temperatures should hover into the mid to upper 70s. So let's take a neighborhood view here. 77 in New Braunfels for the high. 74. 
77 in Seguin, 77 at Lackland, 75 in Leon Springs, and 75 up in Bernie. Around downtown San Antonio to Point South, 77 for the high temperature. So here's your spooky Halloween forecast. 56 at 10, 67 around noon. Mostly sunny skies all day long. <clears throat> Pardon me, south winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, and then a really nice evening. So if you are planning on going trick-or-treating, maybe doing a socially distanced trick-or-treating, putting some candy out for kids, just know that this evening it is going to be pretty nice. Uh, notice the, uh, uh, the headstone here, Here Lies 2020, It's Dunk kind of has for a lot of folks, unfortunately. Uh, but we were looking at temperatures falling into the 60s. We'll have a uh, south wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, though, there is going to be a kind of a spooky element. You're going to want to beware of werewolves because we do have a full moon tonight. It's actually a blue moon, so the second full moon of the calendar month. This is the first Halloween full moon that's been visible across all time zones in the U.S. since 1944. Four. That is impressive. We'll have a sunset in San Antonio around 648 and you'll be able to see that bright full moon. Like I mentioned, it's been very dry this month. This is a look at rainfall totals for this month. Only a little bit less than a quarter of an inch of rain. That's more than three and a half inches below what we normally see in the month of October. And unfortunately, there's no chance for rain in the next seven days. At least the weather is going to be nice, but we aren't going to be seeing any much needed rainfall. We'll have mornings generally in the 40s or near 50 degrees and then afternoons in the 70s. Election day, the weather looks great. There should be no reason to stop you from going from the polls weather wise on election day. And then we will see humidity slowly make its way back. Mugginess will return by Friday, but we're not talking temperatures in the 80s for the next seven days. So really nice there. I'm very conflicted about what I should do today because I mean mm. tonight for Halloween because I don't know if we're gonna have trick or treaters or not. Oh. So I'm I bought the bag of candy. Mm -hmm. What'd you get? Ate half of it last night to myself. <laughs> Bunch of Skittles. <laughs> You're the worst. No one wants to go to your house anyway. We're handing out Skittles. <laughs> no Skittles and chocolate. Okay, what kind I, of chocolate? Like the Snickers and. Oh, you got like the fun bag. Yeah. Okay. I I give out good candy, Max. Mm, I don't know. You said Skittles. But I'm gonna put it out far away and like spread it out and have it all ready to go. But I don't know if I I'm gonna put it out. You could really be the hero of the neighborhood. King size candy bars. It's too much. <laughs> Time now 6:47, 42 degrees out. It's National Candy Apple Day. Hmm, hold on to your hold on to your teeth. <laughs> Still ahead, the legend of how it was first discovered. That looks discovered. really good. I'm not even like a big candy apple person, but that looks really good. It looks yummy, but it's making my teeth hurt. Taking a look outside with Trans Guide. That's 151 at Loop 410. Actually, seeing some traffic out there this morning. We we'll, right we'll be right back. Oh, wait, sorry. Go ahead. Lottery. <laughs> We're going to talk about the lottery first. Big three, five, four, three, fireball six, daily four, six, six, eight, four, fireball eight. Cash five, four, 12, 21, 26, 34. And Mega Millions, 14, 19, 34, 39, 59. Mega Ball 11, Mega Plier 2. Welcome back in your consumer news this morning. Apple's Mac computer is posting its best quarterly earnings ever. The company announced Thursday it sold more than $9 billion worth of the computers in the three months ending September 30th. That's compared to under $7 billion in sales during the same time last year. Apple is partly crediting the pandemic and the need to assemble home offices. The Mac computer has been around since 1984. Hmm. And Lowe says it's hiring 20,000 associates to help it through the holiday season. The, posi the positions are both full and part-time and, and are for work at both stores and distribution centers. The company also announced it's giving out an additional $100 million in bonuses. They're to thank the frontline hourly workers and support their families during the holiday season. And Dunkin', and Dunkin Donuts and Baskin Robbins are getting a new parent company inspire brands announced it has bought the two chains for a little over 11 billion dollars with this deal inspire acquires more than 12,000 dunkin donut locations and nearly 8,000 baskin robbins 
Inspire already owns several chains, including Arby's, Buffalo Wild Wings, Jimmy John's, and Sonic. And also aligning with Halloween, it's National Caramel Apple Day. So you can make them by skewing apples on a stick, dipping them in hot caramel, and then you can take it to the next level, rolling them in some chocolate nuts or other mm. confections. Be sure to post your creations to the social media hashtag Caramel Apple Day. Fun fact, according to the to legend or to lore, <laughs> a cra- <laughs> the folklore, the folklore of the apple. A Kraft Foods employee invented the caramel apple in the 1950s when looking for a use for extra Halloween caramels. Hmm. Do you say car- do you say caramel? I usually say caramel. It's caramel. <laughs> Hope you enjoy your caramel apple today. 653, 42 degrees up. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the final push to the presidency. In the last weekend before the election, both candidates hone in on those crucial Midwest states as Americans flock to the polls in record numbers. Plus, coronavirus crisis, cases rising in hospitals across the country as some facilities struggle with the influx and the race for a vaccine continues. And unrest in Washington state, overnight tensions high after a vigil for a black man fatally shot by police. It's all ahead here on GMA. In your news you need to know before you go, two people are dead after a high-speed crash on this far south side. Police responded to the 500 block of Peaceful Lane just after one this morning. Investigators tell us a couple was in an SUV driving eastbound when the driver lost control, crashed through a property, hit an electrical pole, and rolled over. The couple was thrown from the vehicle. Both were pronounced dead on the scene. The crash into the electricity pole knocked out power in the area, but has since been restored. Early voting officially over here in Texas. And election day is just three days away. This has been a unique election cycle, to say the least. We wanted an inside look at how each party planned for the polls. That's why tomorrow morning on Leading SA, representatives from both the Democratic and Republican parties of Bear County will be joining us live. We are set to have candid conversations about some of the unique obstacles this year, expectations of this year's election, and what comes next. We know there are so many questions out there for this year specifically. We want your input and any questions you have, so make sure to go to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com right now, submit those questions, and we can ask them tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock and 8.30. Really looking forward to that conversation tomorrow. It's chilly outside. It's 34 in Kerrville, 37 in Hondo, 38 in Pleasanton, only 42 here in San Antonio, 40 in New Braunfels, and 38 in Gonzales. A cold start to the day, but it'll lead into a beautiful afternoon. Sunshine and comfortable temperatures, 77 for the high. South winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Going trick-or-treating tonight? Well, you'll have the light of a full moon to look forward to, and the temperatures will also fall into the 60s. Sunset will be at 648. I'm laughing because Sarah Costa is imitating the dancing of the Frankenstein's monster and uh, the mummy there, but it's going to be beautiful <laughs> weather to finish out the week, uh, weekend rather, and beautiful weather to start the week ahead. On election day, chilly start, comfortable afternoon, a lot like today, beautiful weather. It'll be muggy again by Friday, but really, honestly, that's the only change to the forecast, a small increase in humidity by Friday. All right, so you got to give people a little bit of it. Let's see. Is that the running man? It's like, there we or is, go. That, is that the Frankenstein? It's, it's, it's a Frankenstein okay. running man. Well, there you go. All right, well, we're about to take an hour long break, and we're going to come back at 8 o'clock. But we have so much coming back, so stay with us. We know that the bells around the city are going to be ringing in honor of those who lost their lives to COVID 19. Those are set to ring at 7.05 this morning. Also, we have Day of the Dead coming up, so our Alicia Barreto is going to showing us how you can see some of our community altars at a distance. See you at 8. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. The celebrations for Day of the Dead have only just begun. You want to stick around with us here on GMSA this morning because we have information on art giveaways, drive through altars, and other celebrations you and your family can take part of. Firefighters had to use the jaws of life to rescue the driver of a pickup after being hit by an 18 wheeler. We have all the details of what happened and the condition of the driver. 
And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, a gorgeous, picturesque start to your Saturday morning and a cold start as well. 41 degrees to start your weekend, start your Halloween. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Saturday, October 31st. Happy Halloween. I'm so excited about Halloween. What are you dressing up as tonight? Nothing. I didn't, I didn't. I'm so excited, but I'm not going to celebrate. No, because like I, I bought the candy mm -hmm. and I, and I have it all planned out how I'm going to socially distance give trick or treaters candy. I just don't know if I'm going to get trick or treaters or not. That's fair. All I right. know. Sarah, starting off at 41, gorgeous yeah. sunrise. Beautiful sunrise out there right now. And that sun is going to be our saving grace when it comes to temperatures because it's chilly out there, but just briefly so because we're going to quickly see the thermometer rise. I want to go ahead and show you that sunrise out there. Absolutely beautiful outside right now, but it is it is 41 degrees out there. We do have a bit of a wind chill too, with winds from the west northwest at about five to ten. Feels closer to 37 degrees. And speaking of the 30s, I want to show you a couple of areas uh, that are awfully close to freezing. Kerrville, Comfort, Bernie Stage, Airfield, Comfort reading 32 degrees right now. This will be a temporary, very light freeze for those across the higher elevations of the hill country because again, sun is out. Thermometer is going to rise from here on out. It's 38 at Rio Medina, 36 in Hondo, 41 at the airport 40 in New Braunfels, 38 at JBSA Randolph, 39 at Port SA, and 39 at Stinson. Oftentimes, uh, outside of the city center, you'll see cooler temperatures, and that's what we're seeing. That's why in some areas outside of uh, where the airport is, we're seeing temperatures dip down into the 30s. Meanwhile, it's 47 in Del Rio. 40 in New Braunfels, 38 in Gonzales, and 36 down in Kennedy. So a chilly, chilly start to the day, uh, but even by 10, we'll already be in the 50s. Noon, 60s, 77 for the high temperatures, so it's going to feel amazing outside during the daytime. And then in the evening, temperatures should dip into the 60s. South winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So coming up, I'll detail your trick-or-treat forecast. Some folks are going trick-or-treating tonight. I'll have that for you. We'll be wrapping up the weekend with beautiful weather and that fall feeling will stick around. So I've got those details coming up for you. I'm excited to show you the trick or treat forecast. I think you'll like it. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a driver is in critical condition after firefighters had to use the jaws of life to rescue them from a terrifying rollover crash. Take a look. This was the scene just after 2.30 this morning. Police on the scene telling us the pickup truck was driving erratically on 281 northbound. They lost control crashed into the water barrels at the exit ramp near Stone Oak Parkway. That vehicle then rolled over onto the main lanes. An 18-wheeler hit that pickup, pinning the driver. Firefighters using the jaws of life got them out or flown to University Hospital on at last check in critical condition. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic here at home. There are 177 new COVID-19 cases and one new death in Bear County. That brings the death toll to 1,200 and 51 people who have died from the virus. The seven day average dropping to 191 cases, but not by much when compared to the rest of the week. This week, we have seen higher numbers than the week before. There's also an increase of hospitalizations. 235 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital. That's 12 more than Thursday night. 92 are in the ICU and 50 are on ventilators. When it comes to Mexican candy, flavors run from gamut, from sweet to salty to spicy. The history of the popularity of Mexican candy is the focus of this week's Case That Explains episode. That's right. Our Case That Explains producer steps into the breakdown booth talking about how the episode came about and what you can expect. So this week on Case That Explains, we did something a little bit different. The topic that we chose to cover isn't quite as, as heavy as some of our past episodes. This one's a little bit more lighthearted and I think it's a little bit more fun. So ultimately we decided to cover Mexican candy, the flavors, the history, the evolution through the years. And I think this is a really good topic for Halloween, but also personally, I was very excited for it. So I grew up in San Antonio and I still remember my first time trying Orebanaditas. I don't remember exactly the year, but I must have been nine or 10 um, and I do remember it must have been during the school day in a portable classroom, the fluorescent lights and everything. And I just remember trying this lollipop for the first time. It's one of those watermelon ones covered with chili. And it was 
I don't say this lightly, it was a formative moment in my life. To this day, I still like my food and my drink with a little bit of a kick, and I know that I'm definitely not alone. You know, I know people prefer their margaritas with a little bit of tahini, with a little bit of chamoy now, and if you go into Alamo Candy Company, honestly, any day of the week at any time, you'll just see people of all ages just stocking up on this stuff. Of course, there's more to Mexican candy than just the spicy and sour stuff. There's also the sweet stuff, and there's more to the history than just my story about trying it in school when I was nine or 10 years old. It's a storied history that I was honestly surprised to learn dates back thousands of years. So this episode was definitely, admittedly, a really good excuse to do some taste tests and to wander the aisles of some local candy stores, and that was obviously a lot of fun. Um, but it was also a reminder of the really, really important role that food plays in culture. Because, you know, we've done episodes on systemic racism and about transportation in San Antonio and about COVID-19, of course, and all of those heavy stories are things that need to be covered and they need to be talked about. But, but this story, a story about the role food plays in culture and about culture itself, that's also a story that needs to be told. And so I'm really happy that we were able to do this episode. And even though Mexican candy in all of its forms, um, it's something I've been eating for the past 20 years, I still learned a lot. And I think if you watch this episode, you will too. My mouth, it feels like puckery. <laughs> I was thinking of the Mexican candy. Well, KSAT Explains Mexican Candy Craze is available to stream right now on the KSAT TV app. And you can find it on Roku, Fire Stick, and all major streaming devices. All right, well, organizations around town offering safe alternatives to Day of the Dead celebrations. Although community altars and processions have been modified to be virtual or drive through our Alicia Bereda joins us live with more on the festivities happening across town. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, whether it's emailing a picture to an, to an organization, that way they can post it on their altar or driving through an altar or even picking up an art kit, there's definitely something for everyone in San Antonio because the city has really uh, embraced the celebration of Dia de los Muertos. So take a look at your screen. Let's start with those art kits. So if you have youth at home that love arts and crafts, this curbside event is for you. As part of their largest annual community event, SACI is changing things, but they are continuing with their Muertitos Fest in 2020 style. Beginning at noon today and until supplies last, SACI will be giving out art kits for youth curbside. The address is on your screen. And on the west side, every year, the organization Sananto Cultural Arts has a procession for Day of the Dead. But of course, this year it's been canceled and they cite it due to increased cases of COVID-19 on the west side. Instead, they're inviting the community to bring ofrendas or some small items to honor loved ones. That's at their center located at 2020, 2120 El Paso Street. That altar will be available to the public to view until November 2nd. And then tomorrow, the Conjunto Heritage Taller invites the public to make it to Southtown to honor and celebrate the life of instructor Lorenzo Martinez, who recently passed away. El Maestro Martinez has impacted many San Antonio youth through music and has left a legacy in Conjunto music. And this morning, we're actually going to be live from the San Antonio Mennonite Church in Southtown because that's where Conjunto Heritage Taller is building this altar in honor of El Maestro Martinez. So you definitely want to stick stick with us because not only are we going to see that setup happening, but also they're sending a very, very important message to the San Antonio community. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Time now, 809, 41 degrees out. Whole family is going all in with their Halloween decorations this year. We take a look at their spooky yard decor that's still ahead on GMSA. And if you're looking for some spooky snacks this Halloween, next on GMSA, Eric Hernandez, a fun recipe that you can do right at home. 41 degrees, earlier Ooh. we were 42. I'm saying Alicia looks cold out there, because it is cold. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Spivey will be back with your spooky forecast. This recipe is one that the kiddos can help you with this week. It's a Halloween treat, and if they're a fan of A Nightmare Before Christmas, they are going to love these Jack Skeleton Oreos. First thing you want to do is melt the white chocolate. Do it in 30 second increments. 
Don't overdo it or it will burn. Next, another tip, use double stuff Oreo cookies. If not, you'll end up with a pile of broken ones like I did at first. If you try to use the cake pop in a regular Oreo cookie, it probably breaks. Next, you dip the Oreo into the white chocolate. Make sure you evenly distribute the chocolate throughout the cookie. Once you've done that, you'll set them aside and then you'll put them in the freezer for five minutes. Once the chocolate has hardened, then it's time to decorate. Use an edible black pen to make the face on the Oreo cookie. Then get some black ribbon and tie a bow and your Dak Skeleton Oreo cookies are ready to go. Happy Halloween. They look pretty good. I want one of those edible good. black pens. You can do so many decorations with mm. it where you decorate. Do you bake a lot? No. Okay. <laughs> I feel like anytime somebody says Halloween, Happy Halloween, they Happy have Halloween. to do the voice. Happy, Happy Halloween! Halloween. Ooh. Max does way. it all the time. Yeah. You can't get him to stop. Yeah, it's really a problem over here. <laughs> Max loves to crack jokes. He is the most fun. So much fun. We like to have fun. You know what's not fun? 41 degrees. No, it's cold outside, definitely. But it is going to warm up today. Uh, some good news, though. Pollen count looks great. Yesterday, mold was moderate. Today, mold is the only allergen. It is low at 170. And then look at this beautiful time lapse of the sunrise that's ongoing right now. The sun is going to keep us from being cold today. And we're going to be looking at temperatures climbing up well into the 70s this afternoon. Right now, outside, 41 chilly degrees with uh, the uh, dew point in the 30s and a wind from the north at about five miles per hour. We actually got a wind chill. It feels like it's in the 30s everywhere. And in some places, it has dipped down into the 30s. It's 39 in Port S.A., 39 Stinson, 38 JBSA Randolph, 34 in Bulverde, and 34 at Bernie Stage Airfield. Look at comfort dipping down briefly to freezing. We're quickly going to see temperatures rise. In fact, it may already be above freezing in comfort right now with the sun rising. 33 in Kerrville, 35 in Bandera, and 36 in Hondo. Look at the future cast today. Tons of sunshine. We may, however, see a few cirrus clouds working their way in throughout the day and especially in the afternoon, but that'll just make for a nice sunset and we really will see more sun than clouds today. A 75 in Kerrville for the high, 77 in Uvalde, 78 in Del Rio, 78 in Catula, 77 in Beeville, 77 in Pleasanton, and you guessed it, 77 for the high in San Antonio. We'll already be in the 50s at 10. Really impressive. 60s at noon and 70s in the afternoon. South winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And tonight, this is Sarah Costa's favorite graphic, the dancing mummies <laughs> and the dancing <laughs> Frankenstein. I get a shot. We've, we've determined that the Frankenstein is doing the running man. That's what that's what he's doing. All right. <laughs> tonight, winds will be from the south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Trick-or-treating looks good. Temperatures will dip down into the 60s. It'll get chilly, though, the later we get into the evening and we'll be well into the 50s uh, by midnight. So just a friendly reminder that day, daylight saving time is ending tonight. So we're going to fall back. Uh, we're going to set the clocks back one hour. Officially starts at 2 o'clock in the morning. The morning show is excited about this because this means we get an extra hour of sleep and we wake up early. So we're really excited about that. Take a look at these contrasts today. Sunrise at 747. Tomorrow, sunrise at 647. And then sunset, even more impressive. Uh, Tonight it will set shortly before 7, but tomorrow the sunset will happen in, during the 5 o'clock hour. So it's going to get dark quicker uh, as we set those clocks back. Now, something to notice is that it's nice and dry outside. Dew points are in the 30s. And tomorrow we're actually going to see a cool front move through. It's going to be a weak front, but it's going to reinforce the drier air. And so what that means for us is no chance for rain over the next seven days, but we will still have pleasant weather over the next seven days. Cool mornings in the 40s, comfy afternoons in the 70s. That includes Election Day. One thing I want to remind you of is that by Friday, we are going to have a little bit more humidity in the air, so you'll notice the mugginess, but that's about the only change in the next seven days. Hey, stick around. We have plenty more news for you after the break. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Halloween. A lot of people decorating their yards this year and have been throughout the month. And one local family is a lot more dedicated by changing their Halloween display every day. KSAT photojournalist Asian Bermia has their story. 
Every time we think of an idea, we kind of jot it down and then we pick the best ones. After it gets dark, we change them out. The kids like to help out, so it's a fun thing for the family to do together. We just like to think of funny puns and sometimes we go uh, and make the themes based off of the pun that we've thought of and sometimes we do the theme and then think of a pun to go with it. So, yep, we did the hunting one, haunting for deer. The deer was in the blind. <laughs> we've never really decorated for Halloween before, but I think we went all out this year. Like last year, I think all we did was grab like a light up pumpkin over there and just said, happy Halloween. Today we did a work of artery by Leonardo da Vinci and he painted the Bona Lisa. It's really fun doing the, uh, the skeletons with my family and sometimes things don't go quite right. This morning the ladder fell over. We did one with the mermaid tail yeah. and they were getting their skeleton on. Gordon Ramsay. Uh -huh. It was Gore Dead Ramsay. The scientist. Albert <laughs> Spinstein. Oh yes. <laughs> my favorite one was the Hawaii one. We did a carnival themed one and instead of a cotton candy stand, it was a, a rotten candy. Oh my gourd, Becky, look at that bat. We did Twister. Oh, we did do a zip line, yep. But the zip line one, we almost ended up ripping the, one of the lanterns out of our house. We've gotten a couple of neighbors that have walked by and said that they actually take their walks to purposely go by to see what they're doing daily. So we started the 1st of October and we'll go through Halloween. Hopefully on Halloween, I think we're gonna do more of an interactive one where you can take a picture with them. It's worth it just to uh, make somebody smile. We hope everyone enjoys it. That is too cool. What was your favorite one? Gore Dad Ramsey. Nice. There was the sign that said straight out of coffin. I know. Or rotten. What was it? Rotten candy instead yeah. of cotton candy. Oh, what was yours? Oh, my gourd. Oh, my <laughs> gourd, Becky. Becky. <laughs> Look at that. Well, either way, great job. Love the attention to detail. Time now, 823, 41 degrees out. A man pays for 1,300 £1, pound pumpkin to be carved just to bring a smile to people, we have that story next. That's actually a million. Welcome back, happy Halloween. One entrepreneur in South Dakota paid a great price to get a giant Halloween decoration. Depends on how you define great price. 1,300 pounds worth at a dollar a pound. So we paid $1,300 plus $500 that he had to pay a local art teacher to carve it. So take a look. Craig Mount says that he did it just to bring a smile to people's faces, which he says is always how he runs his company called Nerdy Nuts. While being the king of gourds is nice, Mount says he hopes someone challenges him and does something even bigger and better next year. Wow. So, so it, it's a bird. It's and a plane. It's <laughs> It's super pumpkin. It's super pumpkin. So it's a swan. It's an $1,800 pumpkin With a, investment. I see, I see like a man's face. Is like, that a fox? Like maybe like father time, a fox. We're running out of time. That's right. cool though. There you go. <laughs> if it brought a smile to people's faces, that's all we care about. 827, 41 degrees south. It's the last day of October. It's the last day of October, and that means stores are starting to offer their Black Friday deals. Mm. We have the details in our next half hour. Good morning, welcome back. Happy Saturday, happy weekend, and happy Halloween. 8.31 this Saturday morning. What do you got planned for tonight? Well, I hope trick-or-treaters come, mm -hmm. but I hope they do it safely. Right. And so I have this whole plan of how I'm gonna like put out the candy from you have a strategy. distance. Oh yeah, I have a strategy of like a nice fence, I can lay it out. There you go. You know? Um, do you trust the trick-or-treaters though to just take one? Oh no, I'll be there monitoring. Oh like, good. This one's yours. <laughs> now wait, stop. Now you can come get yours. Good. I have a whole thing, but I, like I, I don't even know if I'm gonna get trick-or-treaters. Very impressed. All right, Sarah, what can trick-or-treaters expect? That's today? just, a, sorry, that's just a sad, sad picture. Sarah Costa waiting <laughs> outside for the trick-or-treaters and nobody shows up. <laughs> Story I life. hope that that's not the case. I hope you do get some trick-or-treaters. And tonight, it is gonna be on the cool side, but definitely not as cold as it is outside right now. I mean, look at these temperatures. 41 degrees in San Antonio, 34 in Kerrville, 46 in Rock Springs, 47 in Del Rio. It's 39 degrees in Creases Springs and 44 in Catula. So it is a chilly, chilly morning.
but I do have a look at that trick-or-treating forecast coming up in a bit and kids going out trick-or-treating will have the light of a full moon, a rare full moon. We'll talk about that in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Now to the top stories we're following this morning. Two people dead after a high speed crash on the far south side. Take a look. Police responding to the 500 block of Peaceful Lane just after 1 a.m. Investigators on the scene tell us it was a couple inside that SUV. They were heading eastbound. The driver lost control, crashed through a property, hit an electrical pole and rolled over. The couple thrown from that vehicle, both pronounced dead on the scene. The crash, though, knocked electricity out in the area. It has since been restored. We are only three days away from Election Day, and there have been more than 658,000 votes in Bear County so far. The total is already higher than the last presidential election. In Texas, more than 9 million voters have visited the polls so far. The U.S. Elections Project also reporting more than 86 million votes have been cast across the nation. And it has been a contentious election season, to say the least. But people across the country, they're still putting love and putting friendship ahead of politics, not letting the differences in the opinion tear them apart. ABC's Janae Norman has that story. The 2020 presidential election has become one of the most heated in history. The, the question Supreme is, Court justice, the radical question, left, would you shut who is up, your man? Listen. But some neighborhoods like this Albuquerque cul-de-sac are proving political arguments can still be civil. I ordered 15 Biden signs. We have like a sign war going on, but it's friendly. And not all the divides are split by fences. What's more important than politics is our relationship. Some are in the same house, like the Duracos, married for 34 years, together nearly 40. She's voting Biden, but Trump has his vote. I said, I can't. I really can't. It's a compromise. And they aren't the only ones compromising. A study by 538 done in 2016 found that nearly 30% of marriages are between mismatched partisan pairs. The Dunbars are one of them. I'm not voting uh, Republican. It's just, this is not happening. Their conversations around the dinner table aren't that different than most. And though they disagree, this is that's just unfair. The, the, it's gonna give opportunists a Three opportunity and excuse to to go out and okay. And so when the clans feel empowered, or when the hate groups feel empowered, is that an opportunity for them as well? Their bond, proving a house divided against itself, can in fact stand. No, I'm not okay with any of it like that. Mm. Put me on the spot. We don't care. Yeah. And that was Janae Norman reporting. We just want to remind you we're going to be again live streams on Monday previewing the election. And this is a look what you're seeing right now on our screen. This is our live stream lineup on KSAT.com and of course the KSAT TV app. They begin Monday evening 7 p.m. We also have two live streams on Election Day, one in the morning and live election returns and live reaction on election night. That you can catch up on everything you need to know Wednesday morning and then again at 7 p.m. In your morning headlines, intelligence officials say Iranian hackers have access to voter registration data in at least one state. Officials say the hackers sent emails to some voters last week instructing them to, quote, vote for Trump on Election Day or we will come after you, end quote. The emails were made to look like they came from, quote, the Proud Boys, which law enforcement agencies consider a white supremacist group. Iran's government denies it is interfering in the election. Now to the latest on the pandemic, a new global record for the number of cases reported in a single day. Just yesterday, the United States had more than 99,000 new infections, surpassing the previous record held by India. They had nearly 98,000 cases reported in a single day back in September. Well, since the start of the pandemic, the United States has now reported more than 9 million cases. Well, small businesses are struggling as the coronavirus pandemic continues to sweep across the state and the nation, but a new grant could help more than 50 businesses in Bear County stay afloat. The Maestro Entrepreneur Center is currently accepting applications for the Building Resilient Small Businesses Grant, which can provide businesses in Bear County up to $15,000. The Bear County Strong Initiative is funding the nearly $1 million grant. The grant will help 56 businesses keep their doors open amid the pandemic. So far, the grant has already received 88 applications. Royal Blue Grocery is one of the businesses impacted by the pandemic. We would 
pay our rent and keep paying our employees and and try to keep our store um, our store up. You know, it's a lot of maintenance that goes into any business. The deadline for businesses to apply for the grant is fast approaching. For more information, visit KSAT.com. Art kits and altars organizations around San Antonio finding alternative and fun ways to celebrate Day of the Dead. And they're doing it in a safe way because of all the restrictions because of this pandemic. Our Alicia Barrera is live with more on the festivities happening across town this weekend. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, processions have, of course, been canceled due to COVID-19. Organizations are wanting to keep community members safe, but they've found creative ways to continue celebrating this holiday that for many, it's a very personal one. But at the same time, it's one that's meant to be celebrated in community. So this is how organizations are doing it across town. Here's a fun one for the kids. If you have an artist at home, write this address down. 1518 South Alamo. Ceci is continuing with their Muertitos Fest in 2020 style. They'll be giving away art kits for youth curbside. That's beginning at noon today until supplies last, so show up on time. And on the west side, the organization San Anto Cultural Arts is inviting the community to bring ofrendas or small items to honor loved ones at their center. That's located at 2120 El Paso Street. The altar will be available to the public until November 2nd. And tomorrow, the Conjunto Heritage Taller invites the public to make it to Southtown to honor Honor and celebrate the life of instructor Lorenzo Martinez, who recently passed away. El Maestro Martinez has impacted many San Antonio youth through music and has left a legacy in Conjunto Music, but they're also taking this opportunity as they mourn to send a message to the public. So you want to stay here with us on GMSA. We'll be joining Conjunto Heritage Taller at the San Antonio Mennonite Church to give you a look at how that altar is going to be built. But again, that big message that they're wanting to send to the community. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Time now, 839, 41 degrees out. Well, next on GMSA, more on research that suggests spending meaningful, meaningful time sitting down could actually benefit seniors' cognitive function. Hmm. Plus, October almost over, and that means Black Friday deals are starting to pop up. Next on GMSA, the best deals and some of the biggest retail spots. Target, one of them. Taking a look outside with live cam, still at 41 degrees at 839 this morning. It's chilly this spooky morning. I'm done with you. Let's go to break. <laughs> Good morning, welcome back, and happy Halloween. October just about over. Target now changing up and charging up for Black Friday this year. The retailer announcing its new Black Friday Now deals. It's a series of week-long sales that run the entire month of November. The first week will feature deals on electronics. Then it'll be kitchen favorites and floor care. The third week, apparel and beauty products. And the last week of the month is all about toys, and that even includes some consoles, things like Xboxes. Now, this is all in an effort to reduce crowds and control the spread of COVID-19 during the sales season. Well, what makes a good hot sauce? Maybe you've got a favorite pepper, maybe the vinegar ratio tickles your tongue, but you probably didn't think of citrus. Hmm. Mountain Dew has partnered with NBA player, Max, how is this guy's name? Joel Embiid. There you go. To create a signature hot sauce. It has habanero, peppers, but it's also said to quote, the distinct citrus flavor that do fans know and love. Mm. I don't know there's a lot of do fans out there. <laughs> They're only <laughs> making 500 bottles, though, for the 500 do fans. But you can also get it if you participate in a social media promotion. Then the brand will pick 500 people to send a bottle to. I would be very wary of my stomach. You know, I like Mountain, Mountain Dew. Dew. I yeah. like Mountain Dew. Well, there's one. <laughs> I guess I'm a do head. Is that what they said? Yeah. yeah. Do head, yeah. yeah. Are, are you a self proclaimed do head? I like Mountain Dew. I'm not like all go. about it, but I, I like would be it. careful with that sauce. I just feel like it'd put a hole in your stomach. It all probably, right. probably will. So just be careful. It's 41 <laughs> degrees out. Let's talk about that. Yeah, let's talk about how chilly it is out there right now, but that it'll get warmer eventually. Right now, outside, it is 41 degrees. Oh, my goodness. And we've got a west northwest wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. That gives us a wind chill of 37. So that's what it feels like outside right now. It is definitely a cold start to the day, but in some locations, temperature 
temperatures are already rising. It's 37 degrees at Bernie Stage Airfield, 35 in Kerrville, 35 in Bandera, 36 in Hondo, 40 in New Braunfels, 38 at JBSA Randolph, and 39 at Stinson. A wider view here. Let's include all of the KSAT 12 viewing area. Wake up temperature out in Del Rio. 47, 46 in uh, Laredo, 39 in Victoria and 41 in Gonzales. So definitely cold outside. We have the clear skies and calmer winds to thank for that. But today with a low pressure system off of Baja California, bringing in some Pacific moisture, we could see some cirrus clouds, but that's about it. That's all you'll see in the sky today because high pressure is still way dominant over our weather pattern uh, and it will continue to do so through the next few days. So you know that the weather is quiet when we talk about cirrus clouds working their way in the forecast. Let's show you the future cast here again. Sunshine all day long, no chance for rain. The sun and the dry air is what's going to allow us to warm up quite a bit. We're starting the day off in the 30s in some places, but in the afternoon temperatures will be about 30 to 40 degrees warmer than how we started off the day. It'll be 77 near Stone Oak, 77 JBSA uh, Randolph. It'll be at 75, 77 in Lackland, uh, 75 at Bernie, 77 Lake Hills, 77 in Lavernia. In here in San Antonio, 77 degrees. Okay, we'll already be in the 50s at 10. I just checked the five minute increments on the thermometer officially at the airport and we're already at 45. So we're warming up 67 around noon around the lunch hour and then mostly sunny skies all day long. South winds at five to 10 miles per hour tonight. It's going to look a little different than the last few years trick or treating this year. But if you want to go trick or treating, Here's what you got to look forward to a beautiful, beautiful day. This is what I imagine Sarah Costa's setup is going to be. Uh, kids <laughs> just kind of taking what they want, right? All right, so temperatures will fall into the 60s under clear skies. We're going to have south winds at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then tonight, Beware of werewolves. The reason I say that is because we will have a full moon tonight. This is the first Halloween full moon that is visible across all time zones in the US since 1944. It's really impressive. We also call it a blue moon because it's the second full moon within a calendar uh, month. So that's impressive too. It's not physically blue. It's just a colloquialism. And the sunset tonight will be at 648. But tomorrow sunset will be at 548. The reason for that, of course, is to remember we've got to fall back as we uh, end daylight saving time. It has been a dry month for October. October, we usually see a lot of rain. We have only seen a little bit less than a quarter of an inch of rain. That is more than three and a half inches below average. And unfortunately, over the next several days, we are just not going to see any rainfall. At least the weather is going to be palatable. It'll be beautiful outside through the week. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. We're used to hearing that sitting for a long period of time can negatively affect your health, but that might not be right. As Stephanie Cerner reports, a new study shows sitting down could actually help benefit help senior citizens with their health. A new study published in Consumer Affairs exploring how spending meaningful time sitting down could actually benefit seniors' cognitive function. The study was put together by researchers from Colorado State University. It says while physical activity is important for older people's overall wellness, taking time to sit down isn't necessarily a bad thing. Researchers say skills and general knowledge and vocabulary were higher for people who spent more time sitting, whereas problem solving and reasoning skills were higher for those who exercised regularly. But of course, there's a difference, being a couch potato and taking sedentary time. The study suggests keeping the mind active even while sitting can lead to strong cognitive abilities. And it turns out those who are more active had sharpened different skills than those who were less active. While the researchers aren't encouraging people to spend more time on the couch, they do suggest to keep your brain active while sitting down. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. There you go. Time now, 852, 41 degrees out. Now let's take a look at some Halloween pictures sent in by our viewers. You can send in your pics on KSAT.com right now. Next. I, my, myself, and Max will show you. No, 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 you and Sarah Spivey are coming up next. Oh, okay. Okay, next Sarah Spivey and I will we'll show you some of our own Halloween pictures. These are cute. They are cute. 
Good morning. Welcome back and happy Halloween. We've gathered some of our favorite Halloween costumes. Let's take a look at the, the, some of the pictures from off some of our GMSA crew. Oh my God. That's me as Dobby. That is terrifying. <laughs> it looks like the. And then Sarah Spivey. Oh, that's such a good pick. Oh, our, our Stephanie Serna. Throwback with Rooney. And this is our producer, Gabby. She's dressed with not Woody. And Jesse. Jesse. As and then there's Nora, our local celebrity. The cat. Super cute. There's Stephanie again with her daughter, Rooney. Aw. And Gabby. Poodle girl. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally the most terrifying photo. I have to ask you, Sarah, you by far go all out with your Halloween costumes. I mean, this is super, these are super cute. But yours is like frightening. I and it wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> There's Voldemort. Like and my Sarah. dog Scooby was nice. Wow. Do you only that's do Nora. Harry Potter? No, I just I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. Okay, that's fair. All right. Time now, 857, 48 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, San Antonio has ranked been ranked one of the best cities in the US. Well duh. We'll tell you what we'll tell you what people voted us at. Right now on GMSA at 9, the latest information after a deadly overnight crash. Two people pronounced dead on the scene after that rollover on the city's south side. What San Antonio police tell us led up to this accident. Plus, an intense fire leaves just the shell of a home. Details on the struggle that the Kirby Fire Department had on putting out these flames. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, we started at 42, went down to 41. We are up to 48, but it is picture perfect outside. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning. It is 9 o'clock this Saturday. It is October 31st. It is Halloween. Happy Halloween. I love Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have to do it. I just, I love it. I, I came into work today. I had a note from my fellow meteorologist, Katie Blake, that said, Happy Halloween. It's her favorite holiday. It's one of my favorite. I mean, candy, dressing up, having fun. You know, t this year looks a little different because we're going to have to find a way to socially distance. But still, I've got a lot to cover in the forecast, including your trick-or-treating forecast out of distance, if you'd like. Uh, outside right now, let's take a look at the pollen count. Mold is low at 170, and that is good news because yesterday mold was moderate. So it's nice to see uh, the change there. Outside right now, again, just within the last 30 minutes, we've seen the temperature rise by uh, more than five degrees. So earlier we started off at 41. It's 48 degrees. We had a wind chill, but winds are starting to calm down a little bit uh, and it's nice and dry outside. This is perfect running weather. If you want to go for a morning run or a morning walk, it feels great outside for that. Other than that, it's chilly out there. Uh, it's 38 in Comfort, 38 in Kerrville. Kerrville got down to 33 degrees this morning. Bernie Stage Airfield at 41, 47 in Hondo, 48 in New Braunfels, 46 at JBS Say Randolph, a wider view for all of the KSAT 12 viewing area. Waking up in Del Rio at 52 degrees. It's 52 in Catula and 52 down in Laredo as well. So for the day today, we're going to warm up nicely. 77 for the high south winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So although we started off chilly, needing jackets this afternoon, you could probably get away with short sleeves. So coming up in the forecast, I will have that trick or treat forecast for you. It's a fun one. I hope you'll stick around. We'll also wrap up the weekend and that fall feeling is going to stick around for the next few days, especially through the election. So we've got a lot to cover in the forecast. I'll have that for you coming up in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, two people dead after a high speed crash on the far south side. Police responding to this scene 500 block of Peaceful Lane just after 1 a.m. Investigators there tell us that a couple in an SUV heading eastbound, the driver lost control, crashed through a property hit an electrical pole, then rolled over. The couple thrown from that vehicle, both pronounced dead on the scene. The crash actually ended hitting the electricity pole, knocking out power in the area. It has since been restored. Well, drivers in critical condition after firefighters had to use the jaws of life to rescue them from a terrifying rollover crash. This was the scene just after 2.30 this morning. Police tell us a pickup truck was driving erratically on 281 northbound when they lost control. 
crashed into the water barrels at the exit ramp near Stone Oak Parkway and rolled over onto the main lanes. An 18 wheeler hit the pickup, pinning the driver. Firefighters used the jaws of jaws of life to get them out and they were flown to University Hospital in critical condition. Now let's check in the, with the latest coronavirus numbers here in Bear County. The seven day rolling average has dropped to 191 cases, but not by much when compared to the rest of the week, which was already seeing higher numbers in the week before. Meanwhile, one more death has been confirmed, bringing the death total to 1,251 people. Now the numbers of hospitals also continue to rise. 235 people currently admitted in our local hospitals. That's 12 more than Thursday night. 92 of them are in the ICU. 50 of them are on ventilators. And more patients from El Paso were brought here to help with the already full hospitals there. Earlier, the Bear County judge saying we have nine patients here. Metro Health and the mayor saying that number could be as high as 12. And the last day of early voting wrapped up more than 658,000 votes here in Bear County. That number is expected to rise after last night's totals. The total already higher than the entire last presidential election. And in Texas, more than 9 million voters have visited the polls so far and cast their ballot. The United States Elections Project also reporting more than 86 million votes have been cast across the country. Well, also this election season, Latinos are our among the record turnouts during early voting, political analysts will likely study how many Latino voters cast their ballots during the presidential election. A constituency for that for years has had a low voter turnout. Henry Flores, a longtime political scientist at St. Mary's University, says depending on how Latinos vote, they could be the determining vote in several states. And before Election Day kicks off, Bear County already having a head start telling the results. To keep up the increase in mail-in ballots, Bear County elections workers will begin scanning them this morning. According to the Texas Secretary of State's office, counties with a population of 100,000 people or more can begin scanning and tabulating the mail-in ballots after the polls close on the last day of in-person early voting. We know that was yesterday. Smaller counties can't start until polls open on Election Day. And because of COVID restrictions, organizations and families across the city, they've had to reimagine the Day of the Dead celebrations. While processions and community altars were a common sight, now most are turning to virtual or drive through celebrations. In Southtown, a drive through altar is going to be put up to honor the life of accordionist Lorenzo Martinez, who recently passed away, leaving a legacy with his students who want to carry that on. Our Alicia Barrera is live with more on the celebration of his life. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, well, it's been a sad time for those that love conjunto music because on October 17th is when Maestro Lorenzo Martinez passed away and he was very well known here in San Antonio, specifically with the conjunto Heritage Taller. He's a teacher for many years here. Uh, with us live is Valeria Alderete with Conjunto Heritage Taller. Valeria, it's been it's been a tough time, but y'all want to honor. Obviously, it's it's so recent. Oh, the yeah. pain is there, but y'all want to honor him in this beautiful way. Yeah, definitely. This is our ofrenda for Lorenzo Martinez, who was with us for over 18 years, really. He actually was friends with some of the founders before Conjunto Heritage Taller was even established as a 501c3. And he's played uh, the role of a maestro and mentor to many, many students, young and old, with a taller. And um, we wanted to pay tribute to him because of his recent passing and also because of all that he's done for the con Conjunto community at large. So we invite the community to come and um, pay tribute at this uh, community altar. We're on the corner of St. Mary's in Eagleland, and um, everybody can come. We welcome ofrendas. Um, flowers and this is our tribute as the taller to our maestro Lorenzo Martinez. Maria, thank you so much and stick with us here on GMSA. We have his students standing by over here to my left. They'll be playing a little bit for us and it's just so special to hear how much of an impact maestro Lorenzo Martinez has had not only on them but on the music community here in San Antonio. Reporting live Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you so much. Time now is 9.08, 48 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, gun owners will be able to buy ammo at Walmart again. Why the company decided to bring back the merchandise.
Well, San Antonio just ranked as one of the best United States cities. We'll tell you what number we came in as right after the break. First, let's take a look outside. Okay, I feel like last time I did live cam, it was 41 degrees, and now it's 48 degrees. Sarah Spivey is saying that the, it's climbing. What will your Halloween trick-or-treat forecast be? She'll let you know. You really want to stick around for this one when we come back. According to Condé Nast Traveler, San Antonio has ranked as one of the best cities in the U.S. Several Alamo City hotspots got a big shout out. So let's take a look. Readers of the popular travel magazine voted us the fifth best big city. Oh, top five. What, what? Chicago coming in at number one. D.C., number two. Boston and New Orleans following. And then San Antonio Riverwalk got some love along with the Pearl District and the Japanese Tea Garden. Way to go, San Antonio. Awesome. Doing yeah. big things. I think San Antonio has the best cost of living of all those other places mm. that were mentioned. Me and we're just more fun. We I are more so fun. Too. Yeah. We are fun. We have beautiful sunrises. I was going to say, right behind you. Yeah, let's take a look at it on the time lapse. A gorgeous sunrise for us early this morning. We had clear skies, and that's what allowed for temperatures to get down very cold. We'll be getting down to... We got down to 41 degrees at the airport uh, this morning. Uh, right now, though, it's 48. And so we're already seeing temperatures rise, which is impressive. Uh, it's 38, however, in Comfort, 38 in Kerrville, 39 in Bandera, 47 at Port SA, 46 at JBSA Randolph. Now, keep in mind that these temperatures have really been rising. Uh, we were at 39 at JBSA Randolph, and we're already up 7 degrees uh, from the sunrise just about an hour and a half ago. So we are going to see temperatures respond really well to this sun. We may have a few cirrus clouds out there today, but honestly, that's about it. Other than that, it's going to be a nice and comfortable day. Afternoon high temperatures should be in the mid 70s, 75 in Austin, 75 in Gonzales, but here in San Antonio, it'll be 77 degrees, 78 in Del Rio for the high, 77 in Eagle Pass, 77 in Valley, 71 in Rock Springs, so a little bit cooler in the higher elevations up in the hill country. A beautiful Halloween, 56 already by 10, 67 at noon, sunshine, comfy temperatures with low humidity, south winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour hour and here we go you ready for your trick-or-treat forecast yeah Frankenstein and the mummy doing the moves there we'll be seeing the sunset at 6 48 p.m. tonight and as the sun sets our temperatures will fall we'll be in the low 60s by 9 and in the 50s by midnight now just a friendly reminder that daylight saving time does come to an end tonight clocks will fall back an hour make sure to set those clocks back uh, and something else to keep in mind is sometimes when whenever we see daylight saving time it's a great idea to check uh, your smoke detectors in your house and make sure the batteries are working so Today, sunrise 747, tomorrow 647 in the morning, sunset at 648 tonight. Tomorrow the sun will set before 6 p.m. So it's going to look and feel like winter out there very soon. Now, the future cast is good. Dew points are low. Uh, and as we head into tomorrow, we're going to see a brief rise in dew points, but before it can get muggy, a weak cool front is going to move through, and that's going to set up a dry week ahead. Tomorrow, a high temperature only around 75. We'll wake up in the mornings uh, in the 40s in the week ahead and have beautiful weather for Election Day, 75. Beautiful weather over the next seven days. We may just have a little muggy. Ah, it's Jurassic Park! Yeah, thanks for um, indulging us there. Happy Halloween! <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you to and, Ralph. Yeah, thank you. Shout out to Ralph, our director, the man behind the dinosaur mask. That was amazing. Time thank now you. is 9.15, 48 degrees out. And we're going to have your full high school sports and football highlights right after the break. The best catches, tackles, picks, and runs just moments away. Also, kudos to Ralph doing prompter while mm -hmm. in the T with T-Rex <laughs> arms right now. All right, firearms and ammo returning to Walmart shelves. Why the mega store made the decision to bring them back. Sad news to report this morning. Legendary Scottish actor best known for his spy role in James Bond movies has passed away. Sir Sean Connery is reportedly died in his sleep overnight. His movies were a box office gold, but after six Bond films, Connery was tired of the tuxedo. He left his alter ego, opting instead to take on more complex roles. He was 90 years old. 
Well, in your consumer news, Walmart is returning firearms and ammunition to its sales floors. The move comes a day after saying it would remove them after several stores were damaged during civil unrest this week. The company says it removed the guns to protect customers and staff. Now Walmart says the unrest is geographically isolated, so it's putting back the firearms and the ammo. And in just a few months, NBC Universal says its streaming service has Already close to its goals, the company has nabbed 22 million signups. NBC Universal said it expected to reach up to 35 million active accounts by 2024. This accomplishment came without two crowd pleasers, the Olympics, which was postponed because of the pandemic, and the office, which won't be on the service until next year. NBC launched Peacock, Peacock nationally in July. It offers a free ad-supported option and an ad-free one that costs just under $10. And fewer people are apparently spending their spending their days less time on Facebook. The social media site said it has seen a slight drop in its daily and monthly active users in the U.S. and Canada. North America is Facebook's core market. The company expects the trend to continue. Facebook says 2021 holds a significant amount of uncertainty for them. All right, time now, 920, 48 degrees out. And we are talking high school football. Wait for it, wait for it. He crosses the plane. We're going to have the best highlights in and around the area just after the break. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday. We're starting off with head coach Willie Hall of Brackenridge. He is retiring at the end of this shortened season after 37 years at Brack. The squad kicked off their season last night at Alamo Stadium, taking on Sam Houston. Brack on the attack. Quarterback Carlos Carmbaga. Kept it, option read, blew by two defenders. And here we go, six yard touchdown. They'll lead seven nothing. Let's head to the second quarter. The Eagles staying on the ground, running back Aaron, racing to the pylons. Look at him, dipping and diving. Number 10 can't be stopped, running right up the sidelines. And boom, just falls right through the pylon. All right. Let's head to the second half. Sam Houston finally getting on the board. Hurricanes quarterback avoiding the sack, throwing it up in the air. Number two just ripping it away. That is a grown man play. You get to celebrate a little bit. 14 to six, Brack. Eagles have an answer in the fourth quarter. Cam Camargo going on top. Perfect spiral. Oof, number one, finding the end zone. That's all you need. Hurricanes score back to back touchdowns. Final score, Brackenridge 26 to 20. Next up, Judson at East Central, the Rockets establishing the ground game early. It's a good tactic. Let's take a look. D'Anthony Lewis taking the handoff, racing for a 29-yard gain, getting down into the Hornets' territory. A little later, the Rockets stay grounded. This time, it is a fake to Lewis, and quarterback Michael Burrows keeping it, making it all the way in. Eight-yard touchdown. They'll miss the extra point. It is 6-0. Judson with the early lead. The final from East Central, 13-48. All right, next up, number three in 12's top 12, undefeated on the season, 4-0. But it's Warren with the lead, 20-7 in the second quarter, doing it on defense, following a 50-yard pass. Brennan's quarterback, trouble taken down with the sack. He attempted to reach his teammate in what turned out to be a lateral. That was recovered, preventing the Bears to score. The final from this one, Warren 20 to 14. Finally, the Madison Mavericks taking on number eight ranked Reagan Rattlers. The Rattlers... They are coming out hot right through the smoke, and they strike first. Britton Moore rolling out, rolling out. Finding Derek Bowler, he breaks from his defender. Rumble, big man rumble down to the Madison 26. A little later, Reagan stays on the ground. Moore is going to tuck it and run. Hurdles a defender. Six-yard touchdown. Reagan takes the early lead. The finer from Comlander, 38 to 14. You got to respect the hurdle. Yeah. 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 Love the passion. All right, 926, 48 degrees out. Well, still ahead on our next half hour, making yes, sure that's everyone. That's the best candy. Reese, I, okay, Reese's peanut butter cups, <laughs> Max says, the best candy. <laughs> well, making sure everyone stays safe this Halloween holiday, a look at some new guidelines in order for both adults and children. Plus, the power of the young vote as political partisan lines spend and break records. We're going to have the latest as we are just three days away from Election Day. Good morning, welcome back. Happy Saturday and happy Halloween. 9.30 this morning, October 31st. And it feels like Halloween weather out there. Mm-hmm. Spook. Absolutely. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> 
for the morning at least, but now it feels <laughs> great outside. I, I, I gotta admit, I'm a little disappointed because uh, Sarah Costa every year, she absolutely nails Halloween. She usually has a Harry Potter theme. Last year she was Voldemort and I, there's just not gonna be any Harry Potter theme this year. So we're a little sad about that. That's a side note, but I'm happy that these temperatures are rising. It was 41 degrees to start the day. Now it's 48 and as we head into the next hour here, temperatures are really gonna get into the 50s quickly. It's already in the 50s in Del Rio, 51 in Uvalde, 50 in Carrizo Springs, 52 in Rock Springs. Keep in mind that we're gonna be in the 70s this this afternoon, so really only going to see beautiful weather for this Halloween. Nothing spooky about it, I think. And even tonight, as the kiddos go trick or treating, uh, temperatures are going to be really comfortable. I'll have your trick or treat forecast coming up in a bit, as well as a really interesting fact about tonight's full moon. You heard that right full moon on Halloween. Beware of werewolves. I'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. New overnight crews with the Kirby Fire Department worked to put out a big house fire late last night. Take a look. This was the scene around 9.30 p.m. That was a home in the 3500 block of Candlewood. And when officers arrived, they said that they saw flames going through the roof of the second story of the home. They were able to contain the flames, but they say it was difficult because the home had so much inside. That fire so bad, the second floor and the staircase collapsed. All that remains now is a brick shell of what used to be the house. Crews say they'll most likely have to knock the rest down. Luckily, though, no injuries reported. In your latest news, a discovery could lead to some closure for one local family. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says the skeletal remains were found by a Texas Parks and Wildlife game warden at a rural spot near Foster Road in Hildebrandt in Far East Bear County. Salazar believes they may belong to Curtis Perry, a man who disappeared in July. Perry's family says they were hoping for a better outcome, but believe he was, but, but believe he has been found. You got, and the, the BCSO says the suspects in this case are believed to be dangerous and teens linked to other violent crimes in the area. So far, no arrests have been made. Well, a lot of the early voting numbers, the huge numbers that we've seen is due in part to the young vote. Both campaigns using their war chests to target the under 30s with messages hoping to sway them to their side. ABC, ABC's Dear D. Bolton has the more. With just days to go before the election, more than 7 million young voters have already cast their ballots, many of them voting for the first time. I'm going to vote. I'm so excited. Woo I'm doing my civic duty. In eight battleground states, young people ages 18 to 29 have cast at least 50% of the early vote compared to 2016. A lot of enthusiasm from young voters can make a really big difference. For that reason, both parties are making big efforts to get support from Gen Z and millennials, spending billions of dollars on social media and traditional media ad buys to pick up votes. While Twitter has banned political ads and Facebook is restricting them to varying degrees, celebrities and social media influencers have taken on more important roles this election cycle. From Kid Rock. The greatest country in the world! to Taylor Swift, who's urging Americans to get out and vote in this now viral campaign as. Josh Rush is an actor and political activist fighting for progressive causes with 1.4 million followers on Instagram. If I can use my voice and have the opportunity to change even a couple votes and get some people out to vote, that's huge. And right-leaning influencers are also coming out in force. But a lot of conservatives today are really afraid to get out there and tell people what they think. I feel like one of my functions is to sort of motivate those people. According to 538, between 35 and 60 percent of eligible voters just don't. Young voters have been accused of being apathetic, but many say they face systemic barriers, such as not being able to take the day off of work or having trouble accessing and finding their polling place. That influencer, Josh, is a first time voter. He said he didn't even know that the mail in ballot would be two pages. That's part of what he wanted to show his followers so they knew how to fill it out. Deirdre Bolton, ABC News, New York. And we want to remind you here at KSAT, we have full election coverage all day, both on air and online, beginning tomorrow night, 7 p.m., and lasting until Wednesday. We're going to have the latest on the national, the state, and the local races. For all that information, just head to KSAT.com. 
And time now is 9.35, 48 degrees out. Well, coming up, a new study took a scientific approach to finding the scariest Ooh. movie. Which one, they say, will keep you spooked? I'm very excited about that. Plus, keeping you safe as you trick or treat later. We're gonna tell you some of the guidelines for both adults and kids. See, here's the thing, you can wear a mask while wearing a mask. Double up. <laughs> also, bundle up. Well, I think 48 degrees is still very cold I'd outside. I'd say 50 degrees is the line of demarcation, so 48, yes. Yes, wear a jacket this morning, but will you need one while trick-or-treating? Sarah Spivey will let us know. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Halloween. As everyone already knows, Halloween is going to look and feel a lot different for kids this year, and that means it could be a little more dangerous because of the coronavirus. For adults and children, there are some new guidelines in order. Ursula Perry shows us how UT Health San Antonio Pediatrics is spreading some good advice. Hi, kids. Dr. Tess Barton's video from UT Health San Antonio has been shared with school districts in the area, hoping to provide a little guidance in a year where nothing is normal. And your cool Halloween mask on the top. And your Her advice takes the COVID safety guidelines and puts them to work for Halloween. For example, avoid itchy face paint. You're going to go as a kitty cat. Instead of painting your face, you know, you wear a mask that's got the kitty cat face on it. Um, or you put the bunny ears on your face shield. Halloween masks still need a filtering mask underneath. For Halloween costumes, you might as well go big. So things that have wings um, or things that have a big, you know, princess hoop skirt um, or like a box, a robot costume made of boxes or something that's bulky actually keeps other people away from you. She also advises inflatable costumes provide a pretty good barrier. Be sure to sanitize your hands between houses and wait to save six feet in line while waiting for treats at homes. As for adults, sanitize between visitors and you should be the one who puts the treats in kids' bags. To be sure that you've sanitized your hands after that because there may have been hundreds of other little hands inside that same, inside that same bucket. Also, have a table with treats at your door to separate yourself from your visitors. You've no doubt noticed that most Halloween parties and carnivals have already been canceled. Traditional activities like apple bobbing just are not coronavirus friendly. If you'd like to see the full video that UT Health put out with COVID safety tips for Halloween, you can look for this story on our website. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. All right, well, COVID aside, what is your guys' favorite Halloween candy? Skittles. Skittles? You know what? I love Almond Joys. Oh, okay. I love Almond Joys. And, you know, I love that story that Ursula did. I personally had a little socially distanced Halloween gathering with like five of our friends, mm -hmm. and we played Halloween Bingo. Whoa. Ooh. So we used little candy corns as uh, the bingo markers, and everybody had their card, and we called out the names. Did you and, win? And, um, no, I was the facilitator. Oh, okay, okay. Smart. I did not win, um, <laughs> but I won the hearts of everybody. There. Okay. You win, <laughs> our hearts. you win our hearts every day, Sarah Spidey. Thank you so much. I do want to focus on a second for a second on the uh, forecast for the day. Uh, now, first, let's start with the pollen count that we got in. Uh, mold is uh, low at 170. That is some good news there because yesterday mold was moderate, and we only have one allergen out there today. It is that mold and thankfully it's low outside right now total sunshine 48 degrees but I checked the five minute readings these are taken at the top of the hour and I checked the five minute readings we're already in the 50s in San Antonio and so temperatures are going to continue to rise and we'll be able to warm up really nicely into the 70s this afternoon so it's going to feel great out there this afternoon we do have a wind from the northwest at about three miles per hour pretty light wind temperatures kind of all over the map we've got the low 40s up in the hill country and the higher elevations uh, 46 in bandera 48 canyon lake 45 in bulverde 48 in new Braunfels, uh, and 47 in at port sa 46 at jbsa randolph 54 in pleasanton so kind of the warm spot on the map is pleasanton givaldi carrizo springs right around 54 degrees this morning so it feels great outside low humidity we're going to 
continue to have a really beautiful forecast. The one thing you'll notice that's a little different today is I think we'll have some cirrus clouds working off of an upper low pressure system, uh, bringing in a little bit of that Pacific moisture. But you know it's going to be a pretty quiet day when we're talking about cirrus clouds being the change in the forecast. Other than that, a ridge of high pressure is going to stay the dominant factor in our weather and allow for us to see tons of sunshine, low humidity, a gorgeous Saturday and a beautiful Halloween. High temperatures and a neighborhood view right around like 75 Leon Springs, Fair Oaks Ranch area, 75 Bernie uh, and 75 at Timberwood Park, 75 at JBSA Randolph, right around 77 downtown San Antonio and up to Stone Oak as well. So if you're planning out your Halloween uh, during the day, it's just going to be really quiet. We'll already be in the 60s by noon, already be in the 70s by dinner time. South winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, of course, I'm sure parents are coming up with really clever ways uh, on how to have their kids go trick or treating. I like this graphic because it shows <laughs> the, the kids just taking their own bags there. So I think that's probably what Sarah Costa's house is going to look like tonight uh, for socially distancing. And then temperatures will fall into the 60s tonight. Again, sunset right at about 648 uh, this evening and uh, so we'll have south winds at 5 to 10 it'll be a little chilly I mentioned this earlier really interesting thing going on tonight beware of werewolves because we will have a full moon tonight and this is the first Halloween full moon that's visible across all time zones in the US since 1944 and it's going to be a little spooky out there, but illuminated. You won't really need too many flashlights. Now, unfortunately, it has been a very dry October. This is a look at the past month, uh, and we've really only seen a little bit less than a quarter of an inch of rainfall. So that's well below average by more than three and a half inches. And as we close out the month here today, no rain expected today. No rain expected for the first week of November as well, as you can see in the forecast. But at least the weather will be very pleasant. Uh, tomorrow, a very weak cool front is going to move through, and that's what's going to keep our uh, weather fairly dry over the next few days. Uh, cool mornings in the 40s. Comfy afternoons in the 70s. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> We've been dealing with that the last couple of days, but a beautiful end to October and a great start to November. Just wish we could get some rain. Maybe next week. We'll see. So my favorite part about this, the fallback. Hour oh, of yes. sleep. It's going to be nice. And you can stay up later, give out the candy in a safe manner. I know, but you still, if you're not used to staying up late, mm. like me, like you, I, like Sarah, I, <laughs> like I us. Was, yeah. <laughs> so are you going to hand out candy? And very safely, I hope people come. You gotta at least put on like a wishes hat or something. I'll, do, I'll figure something out. All right, 946, 48 degrees out. Well, as we approach Halloween, what do you think is the scariest movie of all time? Ooh. Coming up, we'll tell you about a study that measured viewers' heart rate while watching these scary movies and put an end to an, the debate once and for all. Oh, which one would you say? I don't know, like anything with demons, like Exorcist and. The mm, yeah, Exorcist is a classic. Oh, I can't even. I can't even finish it. Mm. All right, taking a live look out at the Alamo City 151 at 410. Everything looks to be going smoothly on the roadways. 48 degrees to start that Saturday morning. Happy Halloween. We'll be right back after the lottery. Pick three, five, four, three, Fireball six, Daily four, six, six, eight, four, Fireball eight. Catch five, four, 12, 21, 26, 34. And Mega Millions, 14, 19, 34, 39, 59, Mega Mall, 11. Whoever dressed up their child as that, is the it clown? Saw. Oh, Saw, it was saw clown? Yeah. I don't know. The, was it it or was it Saw? Oh, it was okay. terrifying. Yeah. Like, truly well done. terrifying. Well yeah. done. And speaking of terrifying, what's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> Maybe it's Nightmare on Elm Street or Friday the 13th, but which one is the scariest? Stephanie Cerna tells us about a recent study that took a scientific approach to finding that answer. 
Many of us have that one movie that really scared us as a kid and may even give us the creeps now. But a recent study conducted by the website Broadband Choices let its participants watch 120 hours of the scariest horror films of all time and measured their heartbeats via a heart monitor while watching. Using a baseline average heartbeat of 65 beats per minute, the study watched for how much the viewer's heartbeat jumped during scary scenes. Based on this information, the 2012 horror flick Sinister, starring Ethan Hawke, claimed the top spot. The study showed that average heart rate was the highest at 86 beats per minute, and that number spiked to 131 during a jump scare. The second scariest film, according to the study, was the film Insidious. That's from 2010. That movie had an average of 85 beats per minute, but the film did beat Sinister in the jump scare category when viewers' heart rate jumped to 133. The Conjuring came in at number three with 84 beats per minute. Hereditary and the original Paranormal Activity rounded out the top five. Other horror favorites like The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Ring, Halloween, and The Exorcist all made the top 20 list as well. Stephanie Serna, Case at 12 News. All right, there we go. Insidious, Hereditary, and what was the last one? I, I don't remember. I think I'm putting them all on the list. I just, I get scared, so I don't watch them. That's fair. All right, 952, 48 degrees out. Well, have you ever tried to clean coffee out of your carpet? Yes. How about wine? Yes. Or even blood? Ooh. Was there a yes on that one? <laughs> no. <laughs> Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll tell you about a few remedies that can help save you. Save you from hiring a pro. Good morning and welcome back. A music organization based in Southtown is mourning the death of a well-known accordionist. Lorenzo Martinez passed away earlier this month, leaving a legacy with his students who are determined to carry it on. To honor him, today his students will build an altar for the community to enjoy drive through style. Our Alicia Bonetta is at the San Antonio Mennonite Church with more on the message they want to send to the community. Well, it's a special morning, but of course, the Conjunto Heritage Taller is still mourning the passing of Lorenzo Martinez. It's very recent. It was on October 17th when they received the news. With me is Valeria Alderete with Conjunto Heritage Taller. Valeria, this altar, what does it mean for the Conjunto community here in San Antonio? This is a way for us to pay tribute to Maestro Lorenzo Martinez, who played such an instrumental role in the Conjunto community at large. So not just with the taller, where he had students of all ages. Um, Lorenzo has produced records, and he's done several performances around the community, um, even outside of the state. And so this is a way for us to pay tribute to somebody who has made such significant contributions to Conjunto music. And especially since we weren't able to gather and be with him um, during these very difficult times. We wanted to make sure that we were able to honor him in this way. Well, thank you so much, and we're so sorry for your loss. And another big aspect are the students um, that Lorenzo Martinez taught. And here is one of his. You started out when you were really young. Obviously, this has been a tough time, but what does all this uh, community gathering mean to you? Um, it really means you know what it is in your know, community right we're we believe we're a family here at the taller and not just also at the taller but the whole Conto community and as you can see here lorenzo's legacy lives on through his students myself and joaquin as well um his legacy goes it's multi-generational you started when you were nine years old i started when i was eight years old and i joaquin started when you're eight seven. and seven. he was seven so you can see really um we've come a long way under lorenzo so we're, we're really gonna miss him Thank you so much. And you guys, we're going to leave you with the music here, Cielito Lindo, played by two of the students of Maestro Lorenzo Martinez. Take it away. Well, tonight, if you're going trick-or-treating, temperatures are going to be on the cool side in the 60s. Uh, and then looking ahead, beautiful weather, chilly mornings, comfortable afternoons. Don't forget to fall back tonight. We get an extra hour of sleep. Great weather through Election Day. All That's right. Matt. That is me. Wait, which one are you? I am the one who's not Leo and Phil. That's Alicia <laughs> as Selena. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. 
And that is Roslyn, Mini are one of our producers here at GMSA, mm -hmm. and that is our executive producer, Joy. I don't, what is I don't she? know what she is. Cereal, there's cereal or something. And Beatrice looks really cool oh, there. She looks mm. cool. Yeah. Was Joy a serial killer? Oh, that's right. Oh, that makes oh sense. and then and Wednesday, Wednesday, Adams. Got it. Okay, well, there you go. And some, I don't even know who that was. All right, last shot of the day. We want to wish uh, happy Halloween Ralph, to everyone out come there. Come on in, Ralph. Ralph, there, there we go. <laughs> I forgive you for attacking me earlier. <laughs>